Welcome back to Bison Information Network here at NDSU. I'm DeMontre Cole, and tonight we have some great campus and local news to cover, including a heartbreaking story of the fundraiser to benefit a Red River High School student who was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer last year. So grab your newspapers, coffee, and your tea, and stay tuned. The 13th Battle of the Centis fundraiser will benefit Dawson Van Sickle, a beloved Red River High School student who was diagnosed with a rare bone cancer last year. The annual competition between NDSU student ambassadors from the College of Health and Sciences and College of Engineering runs from April 8th to April 12th. Cash, coin, and Vimo donations will be accepted. Coins and Vimo will be counted as positive points towards each college total. Dollar bills will act as negative points that will be subtracted from each college's total. Donations can be made on the campus in Alder Alderon Tower, the Construction Management Engineering Auditorium, and the M Memorial Union. Here at Bison Information, we want to personally tell you, Dawson Van Sickle, we are praying for you. We are asking God to protect you, shine his light upon you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rain fall soft upon your fields. God bless you. Riley Gaines is set to speak tonight here at NDSU. The former decorated University of Kentucky swimmer campaigns against the participation of transgender women in women's sports. In 2022, Gaines tied for fifth place with University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thomas. Thomas became the first transgender woman champion in the NCAA women's division after winning the 500-yard freestyle. Last month, Gaines was one of 16 women who launched to legal case against the NCAA regarding this particular topic. This event is sponsored by the conservative organization Turning Point, and it is free and open to the public. The NDSU Press will launch seven of its most recent book releases during the ninth annual NDSU Press Party, scheduled for Saturday, April 13th, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Harry D. McGovern Alumni Center, located at 1241 University Drive in Fargo, North Dakota. The event is free and open to the public. Authors will will each read briefly from their books and they will be available for autographs and further discussions. NDSU Press invites all readers and writers of the Plains and Prairies to join in the celebration of literary and scholarly publications. I am extremely excited to invite you to an unforgettable opera experience this Friday and Sunday at Fargo-Moorhead Opera. They will be presenting the wonderful Puccini's masterpiece, Turandot, a wonderful work in three acts with libretto by Giuseppe Adimi. Set in China, the opera follows the story of Prince Kalaf, who falls deeply in love with the cold-hearted Princess Turandot. As the story unfolds, we are taken on a journey of love and passion and sacrifice. Did you know that by March 1924, Puccini had already completed the opera up to the final duet? However, he was dissatisfied with the text and did not continue until October 8th. Tragically, just two days later, he was diagnosed with throat cancer. Despite his illness, he pushed through and completed the final duet before passing away from a heart attack on November 29, 1924. 
this Friday, April 12th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, April 14th at 2 o'clock p.m. in the Festival Hall to witness this stunning production of Tordendot. Let the powerful voices of this talented cast and the beautiful music of Pochini take you on a amazing emotional musical ride. Don't miss the opportunity to experience one of Puccini's greatest works live on stage. Tickets are available at Far FargoMoorhead.com, so make sure you reserve your seat before they sell out. Hamas has indicated it is currently unable to identify and track down 40 Israeli hostages needed for the first phrase of the ceasefire deal. According to an Israeli official, a source familiar with the discussions raising fears that more hostages may be dead than are publicly known. The framework that has been laid out by negotiators says that during a first six-week pause in the fighting, Hamas should release 40 of the remaining hostages, including all the women as well as sick and elderly men. In exchange, hundreds of Palestinian prisoners would be released from Israeli prisons. Hamas has told international mediators, which included Quater and Egypt, it does not have 40 living hostages who match those criteria for release. Both sources says CNN's record of the conditions of the hostages also suggests there are fewer than 40 living hostages who meet the proposed criteria. Let's keep all those involved in our, in our prayers. The recent tragedy that took place in Chicago Newly released body cam footage has revealed the shocking and disturbing details of the police shooting that left a 26-year-old black man, Dexter Reed, dead. The incident has sparked outrage and raised questions once again about the excessive use of force by police officers. On March 21st, Chicago police officers fired as many as 96 shots at Dexter Reed during a routine traffic stop in the Garfield Park neighborhood. While preliminary investigators suggest that Reed may have fired at officers first, his family and attorneys are questioning the actions of the plain clothed officers who swarmed his car with guns drawn and fired numerous shots at him. The body cam footage released by Chicago's civilian officer and police accountability paints a horrifying picture of the events that unfolded that day. This attack on a young black man by white officers is yet another tragic example of the systematic racism and violence that plagues black communities and society. Black lives matter, and it is clear that black people are truly under attack here in America. The Chicago community is demanding justice for Dexter Reed and all the other victims of police violence and brutality. This cannot continue. We must hold those officers accountable and demand changes to the system that allows this to happen. Black communities deserve better. Well, that is all we have for you today with our local campus and national news. Stay tuned for more weather and sports segments coming right up. And more with our very own Vinny with the Fargo Food Tour. I'm DeMontre Cole. Thank you so much for watching. In this new series that we like to call Fargo Food Tour.
My name is Lisa Nell, and I am the district manager of this location here in Fargo. This store has been here going on two years in June. We opened two years ago. Boston's as a whole is 19 years. We have 36 different specialty pizzas. Um, you can create your own pizza if you choose to. We do have cauliflower crust and gluten-free pizza options available. Uh, medium, large, and extra large, so 12 inch, 14 inch, and 16 inch are our regular pizzas. We have sandwiches, we have salads, we have pastas, we have wings, we have chicken strips, we have appetizers, a um, ton of things. Mozzarella sticks, toasted raviolis, cheese curds, uh, garlic bread, garlic bread with cheese, you name it, we have it pretty much. Great crunch, but it's also like really good on the inside, it's like soft. If you ever been to like KFC or Popeyes, this beats it, 100%. Catch everything on the full video, episode 9, Who's the Boss? There's a whole challenge pizza on here. Go check out the video and see if you can complete it. See you then. Bye. My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. Nation to your very own Bison Sports Report. My name is Logan Yannenberg, and tonight we'll be covering all four sports that are in action. Now, with the warm weather finally becoming a trend here in Fargo, Bison baseball has finally made its way back home. As the baseball team would play host of the Jackrabbits this past weekend in their first home series on the year. Before that, however, they had to play one last road game against the Creighton Ball Club that was near unbeatable with a 22-4 record coming in. The Bison would come close, tying up 6-6 to six at one point, but would fall short 7-8. to eight. They would then struggle to rebound against SDSU, dropping the home opener 1-5, to five, but they were able to recollect themselves a little bit and split the final two games, winning 9-8 to eight in the early Saturday game before losing 7-11. to 11. They would then get back on the road, trekking out to Minneapolis, where they would struggle against the Golden Gophers, losing 3-11. to 11. Now, after the rough stretch, the Bison will have some time away from home to get sorted out, as they play Northern Colorado this weekend and Minnesota on Tuesday. The weekend series against Northern Colorado can be watched on the Summit League Network and the Minnesota game on Big Ten Plus. Now switching to the other team on the diamond, the softball team was set up down south in the infamous Las Vegas. They were not there to party, however, but to get some work done against UNLV as they looked to build off their sweep of St. Thomas. Now the Bison did get a jump on the Rebels, taking the first game in patient fashion, requiring nine innings to put it away 2-1, to one, where they sadly would drop the next two, losing 5-8 to eight and 7-16, to 16, respectively, to close out this series down south. The Bison will return home this weekend to host the Jackrabbits as well, beginning their first of four conference series to close out the season. Those games will be played this Saturday at noon, 
2 and Sunday at 11 a.m. All games can be watched on the Summit League Network. Now let's change out our bat and glove for some track cleats as we transition over to track and field who hosted their NDSU Spring Classic. Welcoming in athletes from North Dakota State, South Dakota State, and even some unattached athletes. Starting with the men, it was freshman Carlton Mukarazita who took the triple jump with a 1497 meter leap. Jaden Murdoch ran a personal best 1049 into the 100 meter, the 10th fastest time in NDSU history. And another freshman won an event with Jaden Williams, winning that 200 meter dash with a 2173 time. The men would win nine events in total. Now switching our focus over to the women's team who are also competing in that same NDSU Spring Classic. We find the same level of success as the men, if not more. The highlight of the meet was Lexi Maples, who scored a hammer throw of an impressive 61.9 meters, winning the meet and placing amongst the top 30 in the NCAA this season. Ellie Niska ran a personal best 24-36 to win the 200 meter, and a pair of freshmen took the jumping events with Joy Nata winning the triple jump and Ariane Birch claiming the high jump. The women took 14 events on the day in all, building on a successful run so far this season that we might not see stop anytime soon. Now after a spring classic to be proud of, both teams will be busy and divided this next weekend as they will compete in two separate events. The Bison will compete in the Pacific Coast Intercollegiate, hosted by Long Beach State, and the Brian Clay Invitational that will be hosted by Azusa Pacific. Both meets will be held Thursday through Saturday simultaneously, but with them both only being an hour drive apart in California, it's going to be interesting to see if athletes choose to double up or choose one over the other to compete in. And finally, we get to close up today with the women's golf, where the Bison were competing in the Stampede at the Creek, hosted by Omaha. It would be a highly successful trip for the Bison, as they claimed first place out of the 10 teams in attendance. It was only a two-team race, though, on the last day, with St. Thomas having an outstanding third round to challenge the Bison, but NSU would hold on to win by three over the Tommies. Maddie Hicks led the Bison on their outstanding showing, recording five over par to take third place. Joe Baranchik followed her up with an 11 over par to tie for eighth, and Elise Hoban finished one point behind her at 12 over par to tie for 10th. Now after this event, the women will have a week off before competing in their last scheduled event of the season, the Summit League Championship. We wish our women's golf team good luck and bring home some hardware for us. Well, that'll close up our short week here on Bison Sports. Now while the sports segment may be getting shorter, the days are certainly getting longer and warmer as well. Now, Henry, I've been hearing rumors that it's supposed to crack the big 7-0 this weekend. Not just once, but possibly three times. What can we expect for this weekend? And is it time to break out the shorts for good for the next few months? Hello, NDSU. As always, I'm your brother, man, Henry Raddock, reporting on your Fargo weather. Right now, current conditions are broken clouds with temperatures of 56 degrees to the dew point of 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Both are in Fahrenheit. Humidity at 34%, and winds are coming from the northwest at 15 miles an hour with gusts up to 28 miles per hour. Woo! It's windy out there, NDSU. Moving to our hour by hour, uh, by 7 p.m., we're mostly going to have mostly cloudy with 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Going uh, down by down, or it's going to get colder is what I mean, uh, to around 6 a.m. where it's going to be overcast uh, with 42 degrees. So if you're out in any of those hours, it's going to be cold. Moving to our skycast, sunrise is at 6.47 a.m. today, and sunset is going to be at 8 at 9 p.m. with a total of 13 hours and 22 minutes of total sunlight. It's a lot of time. It's longer than half a day. Where did all that go before? Well, it's finally back, NDSU. Moving to our moon cast, we have a waxing crescent. Uh, April 8th, we had a new moon, and our first quarter will be happening on April 15th. Exciting times, exciting times. Moving to today's almanac, today's temps are at a high of 67 and a low of 39. Uh, average temps in the state in the past were a high of 51 and a low of 30. And record temps was high of 85 in 1910 and a low of 9 in 1973. Moving to temperatures around the country. Uh, up here, we're getting a pretty interesting heat wave. Well, the other half of the state is cold. Uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, southwest, we're seeing temperatures of 80, 83, uh, 80 in Los Angeles, 83 in Phoenix. Uh, Northern California, we're seeing 76, uh, even the 50s up in the, the northwest part of the country. Southeast, um, we're getting 81 to the 
in that side of the country, 81, 64, all the way up to the northeast, we're getting seeing some pretty cool temperatures, 41 in I think around May and, uh, and all those places. Around here, it's, it's gonna get warmer in DSC, which is all we can hope for. Moving to our, uh, our rain cast, as we can see, the majority of the rain at this time is over on that east part of the country, Wisconsin, all that area. We're expecting a little bit of rain, not even an inch, probably, less than an inch of rain coming in the uh, in coming days, uh, with a tiny bit approaching us uh, on the west coast. So I don't think you have to worry about anything. Moving to the uh, seven-day forecast, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tomorrow it's going to be 54 and 40. Friday it's going to be 59 and 32 with partially cloudy skies. Saturday it's going to be 77 and 43 with mostly cloudy skies. So get out there, NDSU. It's going to be a warm one. I, for one, am going to try to get out uh, as much as I can uh, starting Saturday. Sunday, 69, a little bit cooler, with a uh, low of 53 with uh, mostly uh, with no sorry partially cloudy skies moving to the rest of our week starting Monday 53 degrees and 46 Tuesday it's going to be cloudy and Wednesday is also being cloudy 1658 with lows of 50 and 41 but that Monday you better get out there in DSU because it's only going to be a little while until the days start getting really warm so you got to experience spring early summer as much as you can moving to our national days and today is National Siblings Day. If you have a sibling, call them up. Wish them a happy Siblings Day. National Erase Self-Negativity Day, which is always important. It's always, always, it's always good to have a positive mental attitude about yourself. And National Cinnamon Crescent Day. So make sure to get a nice cinnamon crescent, whatever that is. I'm personally not familiar with that. Anyways, NDSU, that's all I have for weather this week. Have a great day and stay safe and stay warm out there. Roll herd.